Hello again and welcome to another video. In this video I will try to restore a Lenovo ThinkPad S440 laptop. I got this ThinkPad as part of a payment for a gaming PC build I recently sold. This ThinkPad has had its screen smashed as you can see here but otherwise it should be fully working. The screen goes black after the boot screen, but that should be because it's set to use an external screen in the Windows settings. Before installing the new screen, I of course needed it to power off the laptop, and I did that by pressing the power button until this one red dot, which is the ThinkPad logo's eye, turned off. After the red LED went off, I started disassembling the frame by prying with a plastic prying tool. The frame lifted off quite easily. After carefully prying from all sides. After I had taken the frame or bezel off, I noticed that one screw was missing there, so the previous owner probably at least thought about replacing the screen. After taking out the remaining three screws, the LCD could be lifted from the frame. Note that the screen cable is located at the bottom and that can be damaged easily, so the LCD should not be ripped off the frame. To avoid damage or stretching the LCD cable, it's best to just let the screen rest on the keyboard part of the laptop. The cable can be detached, but there's a tape that needs to be lifted off carefully before, and the cable and the part of the screen where it's connected are both fragile, and there's nothing which you can grab in order to pull the cable out, so you have to just carefully wiggle it out little by little. After the old screen is out of the way, we can move to installing the new screen. I ordered new screen from AliExpress, and since the listing was for multiple models, I attached a message that I need the screen for ThinkPad S for, for the laptop. I compared the new screen to the old one, and despite having some differences, they had the same exact model number, so I was hopeful that it would work. After taking the protective plastic off the new screen, it was time to install and test it. The display cable is even harder to plug in than it was to pull out of the old screen because there's nothing you can press on because the cable is fragile but I just little by little pushed it in with the plastic spudger. After the cable seemed to be correctly in I lifted the screen up on its place and installed back the three remaining screws. Powering it on, it seemed to power on normally and the screen seemed to be fully working. After the Windows logo appeared, the screen seemed to turn black and it didn't seem to be on an external screen. I could see the elements like the white 
field which you type your password when you log into Windows. So it seemed that the screen backlight was not working or something which was strange because it worked in the post screen and the Windows startup screen. I had read some warnings about the brightness controls not working properly with some replacement screens so I was hoping it was not that. Next I decided to reinstall Windows with the newest version because I needed to do that anyway since the previous user had left their data on it. To get rid of the bloatware I never install Windows from the recovery option of laptops. I reinstall new Windows by downloading an ISO file from Microsoft and flashing it on the USB drive. The USB drive can be booted from by pressing function key and F12 on this computer. When I install Windows for testing or benchmarking the computer, I always set up an offline account with no password. Microsoft is making that harder every update on Windows, but you can still create an offline account if you never connect to internet and choose I have no internet here. After answering no to some questions, I was on the desktop. I opened the display settings and it looked like I couldn't change the display brightness. But that's normal because I hadn't connected to internet yet and installed drivers and updates from Windows Update. I did that and after updating normally I needed to go to optional updates and select all the optional drivers from here. After those were installed I rebooted the PC and went again to display settings and uh, this time the brightness worked ok. Now that the screen was tested working I powered off the laptop and put the frame or bezel back on. After carefully pushing the bezel in from all the sides it finally seemed to be flush with the screen and I could call the display replacement complete. So yeah it was worth it to take the gamble on a broken laptop this time. I'll be probably using this myself, replacing my older AMD Lenovo laptop. And uh, maybe I'll swap my bigger SSD from that laptop into this one. Anyway, since I was at it, I decided to open the back panel of this laptop and look at the insides. To take the back cover off, 8 screws need to be taken out and the screws are the same type of screw than with the screen so this laptop seems to be quite repair friendly. Inside the laptop there are quite a few modular parts which you can take out. There's the single dim of RAM in the single RAM slot, then there's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card and then a normal 2.5 inch SSD. The SSD drive cage lifts off by removing the two screws and pushing the drive cage upwards. If you happen to have an HDD here instead of an SSD, 
upgrading to an SSD is of course very much recommended. You can detach the drive from the drive cage by taking off these four screws. Reassembly is quite simple of course, just slot the drive cage back in, put its screws back in place and then set the back cover back in and screw all the 8 screws back in place.